you know, I put my heart and soul in this thing, and to me, it, it means something. You know, you just come in here and whack a few fingers off and think there's nothing to it. It's ironic, isn't it, that uh, George Lucas, despite what he thought about Hollywood, decided to sell Star Wars to Disney. I think he did it for a combination of reasons. He had started to get old, and he also wanted to keep the franchise alive for the many fans around the world. Yet when I go back to interviews like this one, and simultaneously analyze the state of Star Wars in the present day, I can't help but think that he made a mistake. Today, Disney is one of the leading entertainment businesses, with its many parks, grandiose movie releases, and at the forefront their streaming service Disney+. Plus. Even if the entire company ended 2022 with about 8% profit, Disney Plus is losing subscriptions by the day. How could that be the case? Well, the everyday individual has started to realize what I have been seeing signs of for many years now. The content they make just isn't good good enough anymore. If you scroll through Reddit, Twitter, and YouTube, you will for instance have a hard time finding people praising the latest Marvel series, or compliments regarding the third season of The Mandalorian. The words average and decent gets thrown around quite a lot, because that's exactly what it is. It's nothing more than time-filled, superfluous, money-making content. That the studios change everything all the time, and unfortunately, they don't have any imagination and they don't have any talent. So, what are you selling? I think this is a huge problem in modern media with tons of underlying factors that together forms into one serious complication of mediocre storytelling. The idea that series and movies just have to be good enough for people to stick around has poisoned the entire society and made these film companies play it safe rather than to just tell a story and see where it goes. Everything has a deadline as well as an agenda which makes the final product suffer, while you at the same time have the higher-ups in these companies making the important story decisions when they clearly don't know what they're talking about. It's just business to them, when it should be looked upon as an art form to inspire and entertain people. A recent interview with Tamora Morrison highlights exactly what I'm trying to express when he revealed, lightheartedly I should add, his uh, disappointment with how they treated his a series. That Mando and Grogu kind of stole the show. Probably a decision the Disney board made because of the huge success of the first two seasons. Look at you. The breakout star. <laughs> Kill me. Or take me in. I myself uh, find the smaller projects, the ones that isn't headlining the different franchises, so much more satisfying to watch, and I think that's because Disney ultimately lets them be. Andor and Bad Batch is two examples of Star Wars shows that at certain moments have phenomenal writing. I mean it's hard to even compare Andor with other stories like Kenobi or Book of Boba because of the monumental difference in quality. It's literally laughable at times. Regarding Star Wars, I actually think Andor has ruined it for me because of how good it was. It has made everything else look pretty bad, and I think it illustrates that it's possible to make revolutionary Star Wars stories, but that you have to let the creators do their own thing, to give them time and resources without intervening to squeeze in, for example, two mandatory episodes of Grogu, and to not just pump out more and more of the same to keep us subscribed. There was a good studio executive at Fox when they did Star Wars. He believed in me because he loved American Graffiti. He said, you're a talented guy, I'll do whatever you want to do. But you'd never hear that today. It has become a tragic situation. George loved making movies, that's it. And I think he certainly is disappointed with how everything has turned out. He preaches the importance of independence, to let storytellers follow their heart, not a set of rules regarding what you could say and do. And until those rules and guidelines disappear, I suspect Star Wars Marvel and the entirety of modern entertainment to keep making the same old mistakes.
curse. The Disney curse is at the moment here to stay. The question that follows is will you continue to support it? If you want to watch a more positive video, you should click the one to the left of you. Thank you for watching and may the force be with you.